afternoon, everybody. It's Eric here from African Art Talks with Eric, and I'm so glad to come your way this afternoon. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, today, we're bringing you a special guest who will talk to us about his pieces of work, brilliant pieces of artwork. But before I do so, um, I'd like all of you to do me a favor. Invite your friends, invite your colleagues, invite everyone that is interested in African art or Africa in general to come over and let's have a good chat about the creative aspect from an African perspective. So I'm going to play the intro again. And yes, share the video, invite all your friends, and let us have a really good chat. But wherever you are in the world, also type in the comment box, ask your questions as the show is going on, and I'll be more than happy to read it. Also, just say hello to me, and I'll give you a shout out. I'll mention your name to make sure that we all do this show as a team. So I'm going to play the intro again, share the video, and invite your friends. <laughs> Great, great, great. So I can see a lot of people joining at the moment, but please do me a favor and say hello to me in the comment box and I'll be more than happy to say hello to you back. So, so far, let's see who's joined us. I can see about 15 people online right now, but I'll, without you typing, I can't see your name. So just say hi, just say hi, and I'll say hi to you back in the comment box. So thank you, Marie. My wife, Marie, is watching with me. Very supportive. Thank you, Marie. So I have seen other people joining in now, and I'll keep mentioning their names as and when they join. But it's going to be a great show because today is Saturday in the UK, as you well know. Our weather is not too great, but yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We can live with that. It's not too um, bad. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So Marie says, hello, husband. <laughs> hello, wifey. And then I have got, hey, a quick Chantel, Chantel Thompson. Chantel says hello all the way from Ghana. I know you're missing the UK maybe, or maybe not, but thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm so glad that you made it to the show. So yes, everybody that's joined, let us see your comments. And I will, as usual, take you to a bit of history. We talk about uh, the Adinkra symbols as I've been doing for every single show, because this show is not just about interviewing artists, but I also want to be able to do a bit of education. So for those who are not very familiar with the culture in Africa or Ghana as a whole, you get to learn a bit more. And then from there, we interview the artist. So that's the format of my interviews. First of all, we learn about traditions, culture, uh, how we do things in Africa, so that it gives you a better perspective of where we're coming from when we do our type of art. And then we go ahead and interview the artist. So let's read one more comment which has come through. Maxi Max says, watching you live from UAE. Hi, Maxi Max. Hope you're doing so well wherever you are. So my name is Eric Amwakabwedu, as I said. And today I'm interviewing a good friend of mine, a really good friend of mine. But let's let's take it from the Adinkra point of view, Adinkra symbols. What are Adinkra symbols? Let us learn about Adinkra symbols. So these Edinkra symbols were symbols that were created way back by a king called King Nana Kojo Ajman Edinkra. So we got the name Edinkra from his name. And he ruled in the Akan region from 1810 to about 1820. And he embarked on just designing these symbols. And for a long time, he kept on doing it until he employed other craftspeople to join him. And each one of them has a good meaning to it it have, uh, has a proverbial meaning to each of these symbols. And as you can see these days, we have them on so many uh, items, whether on T-shirts, earrings, furniture, you name it. You can see an element of a Dinkra symbol all around the world. And Ghana has made a good name from this. But today I want us to look at one specific one, one that really caught my eye that I'd like us to talk about today. So today's one is called 
Yeah. So if you pronounce the syllabus, it's fa wohu die. And then as you're saying it, it's, it means founder. Fahudie in the Akan term means independence. So your ability to gain freedom, independence, emancipation. This is the symbol that we use to represent it. And from the expression, we got it from the expression, Fahudie ene obre na enam. Now, this is tree that I just pronounced. Fahudie ene obre na enam. So literally, it means independence comes with its own responsibilities. Independence comes with its own responsibilities. So essentially, if you want to be free, if you want to have independence, you, it has to come at a cost. And people must be willing to bear the responsibilities of being emancipated. So isn't it something that, you know, you've learned from? Fahudie means independence. Now, whether you want to be liberated in your mind, whether you want to be liberated in the way you do things, it has to come at a cost. Cost, what are some of the costs? If you want to have freedom for your people, you need to fight your oppressors. If you need to liberate your mind, you need to do a lot of learning on learning and relearning. So everything to do with independence will come at a cost. And that's what we learned today from this Edinkra symbol. So I hope you've learned something. Let's keep saying hello to those who've joined us. So I mentioned Chantal, I mentioned Maxi Max. We've got Robert Jones. Robert says, hello, sir. God bless you, Eric. God bless you as well. So Ribet, Ribet rather, Ribet Jones. And then Dada, because he's senior. Senior says, good deal, way to go. Thank you so much, senior. It's good to see you on here. So let, let, let's, let's not waste too much time because I can't wait. My hands are itching to see the guests that I've brought on today. Uh, I'll read a little bit of his profile. I'm not going to read my because that's the whole essence of this interview, isn't it? To get to know of the person. But let's let's see. His name is Richard Mensa. He's a really good friend of mine. Uh, we went to the same college together, Premper College, and I'm so proud of who he has become. He is a brilliant artist uh, whose works are now gaining so much recognition from all around the world. And he has his works being collected from all over, especially from the United States of America. But I just don't want to tell you so much more from myself. I want him to do the talking. Uh, he's a, an environmental scientist as well. So he's multi-talented, multi-faceted. So let's, let's, let's all welcome him. I'm just going to add him to the screen. Let's welcome Richard Mensa. Hi, Richard. How you doing? Let me just unmute you so that we can actually have a good chat. So unmute Mike. If you can unmute yourself, that'll be great. Yeah. Lovely. Hello. Lovely. Lovely. Hello. Hi, Richard. Finally. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Finally. Finally. And finally. Good afternoon. Or good morning to, um, like everyone watching. That's right. From all over the world. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Depending yeah, on where you're watching us from. Yeah. How's it been? Yeah, it's been. It's been great. It's been a very busy day, <laughs> but so far, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. We are oh, still, you know, like it. moving. So that is the most important thing. We're doing well. That is the main thing, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we're good busy is, is, is good, isn't it? When you're busy for nothing, that's the bad thing. But if you're it, busy and it's for a good yeah. cause, obviously, yeah. that's, that's the good thing. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. I think yeah. I, would, I would put the busy into the good category. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was a good. comment that they couldn't see you, so let me just double check to make sure that we can actually see you. Uh, I'll go on my Facebook page just to ensure that we can see you here. Bear with me yeah. one second. Uh, let's see, right? Okay, okay, let's make sure we can see. You. Okay, so your camera is not showing on Facebook, uh, okay. even though I can see you here, your camera is blank. So if you can reconnect. That would be great. Okay, I would go. Or turn off your camera and turn it back on. Okay, let me see. Okay, you're back on now. We can see you now. Yes. Can you? There was a bit of a delay. We can see you now. That is good. Lovely. Hello. Because I don't want anyone to miss anything that you say. <laughs> <laughs> that is fine. But I think it's frozen. It is frozen. Yes. I I, I can see I can see myself here moving. Um, right. let me check what I will do if you don't mind rejoining, that would be great. Okay, all right. So, what I will do is that 
our turn off. Uh, okay. Right. So Richard is going to join us again. Uh, the camera froze, and that is why he is going off. He'll come back again, but definitely. Richard has got some brilliant, brilliant piece of artwork to show us. And then we'll talk about his journey um, as an artist. We'll talk about his career, uh, how far he's actually come in the art world. Because we all know that from an African perspective, we, we don't tend to get known in the art world for what we bring to the table. But today I want us to get to know why and also how we can overcome it, the challenges that we face as African artists. So Richard has come back. Let's see whether it works. Hi, Richard. I think it's Hello. much better. Is Lovely. It? Okay. Yeah, much better. So, yes, uh, let's delve into it. Not a lot of people know who you are. So can you tell us a bit about yourself? Okay. Um, I, let, me, let me just start by saying hello to everyone. And um, thanks very much for joining us um, right. again. Um, my name is Richard Menza, as um, Senior Eric has mentioned. Um, I'm a, um, an artist and a scientist as well. I believe Senior Eric, in his introduction, did mention that. Um, I've got three kids, 12-year-old boy, 8-year-old girl, um, and a 3-year-old. Um, currently, I'm living in the United Kingdom. I'm a Ghanaian. Um, I don't know whether I can add <laughs> like British, but you I prefer to go by exactly. Yes. <laughs> but like I prefer to go by being a Ghanaian. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so we'd we'll say you're you're a Ghanaian living in the diaspora. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so um yeah, I was born in Ghana, um, schooled in Ghana, um, came to the UK about 20 years ago. Yeah. Wow. I think that's 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 a little bit about me. If, that's a summary about um, you, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> you know, if need be, I can provide more. <laughs> so if you hear Richard saying senior, I call him senior Richard as well. Uh, we went to the same college in, in Kumasi in Ghana. And in Prempe College, we call ourselves seniors because we see ourselves as equals. Because if you, if you bring in seniority and all that, sometimes yeah. you don't allow um, everyone to contribute towards discussions. So yeah. we all across the world, Prempe College people call ourselves seniors. So we call ourselves senior. senior. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> even even former pr uh, president Kufour, if I meet him, he's a senior. We call if, him senior Kufour. You know, yeah, right. senior Kufour. So Kufour <laughs> to like re will like refer to me as senior as well. Senior Richard. That's yeah. it. <laughs> there we go. And I think it's a good thing because it equalizes. You know, it doesn't put this aura around us that oh, I'm no. older than you. Uh, no. I finished before you came and all that. No, we no. break all the boundaries. Yeah, everyone is a senior. That's it. So you keep hearing us referring to ourselves as senior. There we go. So yeah. that's the basis of our of our discussion today. Then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let Let's delve into your. You know, I've had interviews with yourself and a colleague yeah. of ours, Shalman, in the past. But yeah. I thought let's let's do a one on one with yourself because we like to get to know what you're doing more. I I believe that the kind of work you're doing is so unique. They story you're telling and we'll get to see it we'll get to let you tell us a bit more about it but how did it all start for you um in the art world um i would i would start from the beginning the very beginning um, okay. i think i've mentioned it um some time ago that um i've always i, I don't know when i started that um i've <laughs> always sketched drawn painted done everything to do with that but with many people in ghana how many creative like people in ghana um we were more or less persuaded not to pursue art so at That's some right. point we all left art behind to do various things so i would say i returned to art um around 2016-17 um okay. i did a sketch and i think everyone around was so impressed um i think um apart from myself <laughs> you know <laughs> who i knew that I, I've, I've always um um been an artist so i think i was more or less encouraged to paint more i i started painting a little bit more um because of the other work that i do as a scientist um mm. i really didn't have a lot of time but a lot of people showed interest in what um, I do, um, like in art, I had um, invitation from galleries and all that, um, but I still didn't really take it serious. So I was right. painting every now and then, um, stopping and, you know, getting back to it. Then last year, 
when the COVID situation like started, um, mm. I had a little more time on my hand than um, I had, you know, like always um, I like had. So I decided That's why it. not, you know, why not look at that? Why not um, dedicate the three, four hours that I'm gaining um, in mm -hmm. the day to mm -hmm. painting more just to see what would happen. So I started painting, you know, being serious about it um, last year, January. Um, okay. okay. And I think the response by the middle of the year was great that it really encouraged me to <laughs> to go <laughs> on um uh, go on and take it more serious and to do more um like serious stuff and also more or less to take a very close look at what i'm painting to think mm. more about you know um what i am doing like the practice just to see do i believe in what i'm painting um, am i painting for the market am i painting for myself am I, you know am i painting for my community and um, what right. stories you know like do i you know have to tell um do do i have to contribute to anything so yeah. and i think it's it's been it's been it's been a journey and it's been um a good growth like for me for the past say 12 18 months mm. i can imagine i can imagine because over a short period of time um the kind of work that you're producing is, is amazing and the storyline as well is yeah. really yeah. brilliant uh, let's take this quotation from you you, yeah. you say that your practice is a balance that often you know miss so let's read it again my practice is to balance the often missing visual representation of critical african stroke black historical events and narratives that should be given prominence but not comple uh, completely missing or not covered adequately in the art space yeah. what do you mean by that can you shed more light on that for us so when i started painting more seriously i think i was painting anything that people would, uh, like, would buy and then the market was dictating how i present my narrative so at some point uh, at some point i had to take a break and just say do you know what um i have to really think about what i was putting like out there does it That's really not. do uh, like represent you know what um like i want to say does it really say anything about myself so mm. i started looking at art i'm still like a student you know like of art i'm still learning you know about art True. um so i i I've started like visiting museums and art galleries and more often than not i just realized that there wasn't any representation and mm -hmm. being a you know someone who is really like into research science and all that you know i yeah. really read quite a lot about everything everything that i'm interested <laughs> in I, I will start like researching reading about it just to find out how that area or how that topic is covered and That's one right. thing that it became very very apparent was that um a lot of key black african historical events that mm -hmm. should be known wasn't known about like anyone you know they were not known about many people and they were not even in that like spaces like at all for example That's right um when we talk about the story of yasantua um i think mm. it's a story that everyone finds it so fascinating everyone that hears about her finds it like so fascinating but in my research you know about yasantua i realized that there wasn't anything to really visually capture what right. she stood for what she did you know mm. and, and i find it so fascinating there was a, a, a very good book that i was reading written by i think an english guy um and the back the like the cover art of Yasantua story was um like a zulu painting of something that. that really that really made me think twice and say do you know what i would want to create something that will tell the story one piece you know which will tell the story of Yasantua, which would right. do her justice more than what like i found and what is That's in right. um, other uh, like spaces so i think I took it from there, then tried to look at other historical, you know, black um, events that hasn't been covered at all, just to give it some prominence. No, I think I think it's a great idea, fantastic idea. I don't think a lot of people, as you said, there's a gap in that uh, storytelling. Yeah. Whereby if I go to a museum or you go to a museum in the UK, US, mm -hmm. wherever else, in the Western world, you have paintings of events that happened during the artist's Italian. time or even before yeah. then. Now it's been very well documented in a in a visual picture uh, pictorial form. Yes. But then when you come to our continent, Africa, we're losing our, our essence, our stories, yeah. 
yeah. we, you, we used to live. Everything about us has not been documented properly. No. Even if it's been done, I think it's the white man who's done it for us. Yes. <laughs> you know, and yeah. they rep represent the way we, we, we actually want to tell that story. Exactly. Exactly. I think that is that is one thing that I found fascinating. So even the reason why I started from um, the historical part, you know, to capture those things where uh, those things were dying, you know, those stories, True. those um, parts of our history, you know, um, yes. are dying because there isn't any visually like anything visually there uh, like Visual to, for people to um, yes. capture it's that. Bit, uh, and mm -hmm. even if we come to the present, um, even contemporary like wise you know what like we see you now there's nothing out there uh, no no i wouldn't say nothing out there because we are getting better at it oh yeah um, we, we are we still need more african artists to capture the way that we live our story our narratives because most That's of the true. time as you rightly mentioned um most of our stories are captured by people that don't look like us um so <laughs> they would capture it the way that they see it so I believe that it is very, very, you know, important and vital that African artists capture visually what we see, how we experience things, and how we want us to be portrayed and seen by the world. That is exactly. that is why. So I started exactly. with historical events. Um, I do reflect the times as well. And um, if okay. there are anything going on, anything which I believe is key, you know, I yeah. would like reflect it like in my paintings as well. Um, if there is something that I think the future or the now we have to learn from the past or we have to learn from now, I would also capture it as well. So it is wow. it is more or less like I see it as something that needs to be done. Um, maybe my contribution to Black history um, <laughs> at some point, you know, like to come in 50, 100 years to come, maybe um, someone will pick my work and say, yeah, maybe this will happen uh, like at this time. <laughs> Uh, and, and that would be my um, um, like contribution to that part of like our history uh, as a race. Exactly. And and do you find it a bit difficult gathering information during your research stage? Is there enough documentation or let's say people back home in Africa that are able to tell us the story as it happened or from your yeah. own experience? Yeah, I think it's, we, we've we heard, um, I think we, I, will, I, will, I would, answer uh, like answer the question like in this way okay. we would be i would say maybe the last generation you know or like the last few people to really tell these stories because our parents did tell us like most of exactly. these like, stories and yes. we all know that at this stage once you hit you know the, the age that like we are most of our parents yeah. are now living the stage <laughs> now and we right yeah like we've got like a generation so i think most of the stories that we've heard you know i, I think um we are the I, I would say probably maybe one of the last like generation or yeah. um to really tell it or to come close to representing it as you know like it was told like they are authentic, because yeah, yeah the, the next generation it will be a little bit diluted then it will That's be true, a little exactly. bit diluted as well as you know um, like time progresses but i think we are in a position whereby we are a little bit closer because our yes. parents even though they didn't document it properly you know i'm not yeah, saying really. that um yeah everyone but i think um, many you know um, the generation um uh, uh like in front of us didn't really document it like properly but i think We've been very privileged to listen to most of the stories. We've got the books. We can visit, you know, so many of these like places. We can yes. call upon friends. We can call upon some of these um, um, parents or parents' friends or aunts, right. aunties, you know, granddads, grandmoms to really, you know, um, say confirm some of the things that we've heard and to capture that, you know, um, um, uh, like in paintings. I think if we leave it. Then the next generation, I, I would say they could pick it up, but it will be a little bit like diluted. It will be diluted. I think you, you've said it brilliantly because um, I remember as I was growing up, I could actually go and visit Okonfanoche's sword. Yes. You know, it might still be there. Uh, yeah. Currently, yeah. it's been barricaded. Yeah. But I could walk to Okonfanoche uh, Hospital and yeah. see and the, sword, the, the actual sword <laughs> in place. Yeah. 
Yes. So I had the privilege, and you will have the privilege as well. Yeah. Because of our age bracket, we yes. saw things physically as well as our parents told us because their message had either been passed on to them as well. Yes. But they told us. But if we lose, let's say, those of us who were born in the 70s and 80s, early 80s, yeah. if we actually take it on from the 90s and the 2000s, mm -hmm. the message will be different because it will be yeah. like Chinese whispers. It will be watered yeah. down, as you said. Yeah. And we wouldn't have a reference point of our parents to go to, to clarify, because, yeah. you know, they would have been gone. They are most yeah. in their late 70s or 80s. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think it's the best time. And as artists, what more to do than to capture them um, yeah. in, in our thinking? Yeah. yeah, I think you've hit um, the nail right, like on his head. Um, yeah. I remember when I was quite young, I would go to Confonoche. The sword wasn't barricaded or covered. That's right. Things. In any shelter, we would through. go and even touch it, try to and put it like it. from yeah. the ground. So yeah. I think, and, and nowadays is, I think covered, they've got um, something like a structure or like around That's it. Right. And many people will not even notice it or have the privilege of paying exactly. to go and see it. Because I think for exactly. now, you do have to pay. I, I don't know, but um, from the little things, like you do have to pay to see it. And you the way it. that we saw it, I think from recent pictures it looks slightly different <laughs> different totally different <laughs> it I mean, looks slightly I, I, different yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. so uh Definitely. i think you know um like you've hit the nail right like on his head yeah that, so um, yes let, let's 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 see how you have actually uh translated that into yeah. some of the stories that we're seeing into paintings and i know that you're continuously just digging out more stories and they are yes. really appealing stories that have not been captured visually anywhere else they yeah. might be in very old textbooks written by the white man <laughs> or, yeah. you know, somewhere <laughs> other than visually seeing exactly what's happened. Yes. So let, let, let's start with this one. Um, I'm just going to show several of your paintings, but yeah. just tell us about your technique, your color choice, the stories behind each one of them, and it will go mm -hmm. along in that manner. Okay. So we've seen two beautiful paintings. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the one on the left, please? So the one on the left, I believe if we all seen exactly the same thing is the Adua dances. Um, That's correct. So that painting, I think when you go to Ghanaian festivals um, in Ghana in general, I remember 2016, um, I went yeah. to Ghana, I went to a funeral and there were two dances, you know, like Adua dances in their okay. kente yeah, clubs dancing they came very very close to us and you know like you would give them the hand signal uh, uh, oh, i don't yeah. know and uh, yeah. Yeah. i mean yeah. i'll take yeah. the <laughs> if you don't know, know me you give them the two fingers just to encourage them isn't it exactly That's so um, i find it very very and you know being an artist i'm fascinated by movement i'm fascinated mm. by colors i'm fascinated by anything that you know shading lines but movement really fascinates me. So that's why like you see a lot of movements like in my painting. So when right. I came back, I just realizing that, you know what, well, I need to really capture um, this, you know, I, I had this like image like in my head that I really need to uh, like capture that. So like I painted these two um, like dances and um, I wanted to incorporate something Ghanaian, something that our own local interpretation and mm. the cloth behind them, I think, in Ghana, if I'm not wrong, is called Rolls Royce. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. so yeah, I think it 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 means different things for like different like people. But for me, when we were growing up, like Rolls Royce um, represent um, kind of um, mm. luxury, um, is it? Luxury. Um, I think it's it, it's it's. Um, we used to, you know, being like growing up in Kumasi, like we like we thought at the time before I even got to know like like Rolls Royce are uh, like well as a luxury this in brand. Yeah. I I I saw it as you know something that really moves really well, moves right. really smoothly and all mm -hmm. that. So I said, Do you know what this we like this dances really moves like the way that Rolls Royce like oh. moves. So I said, okay, <laughs> let me just have this one. As a reference point, like for myself, you know, mm. so I really, really thought about it, and I said, Do you know what, that would be the African print behind them as like Royce Royce, and that would be, even though it's at the word dancing, they were uh, like they are moving smoothly, as you know, yeah. like a Royce Royce. So that is why, like you got <laughs> the background Brilliant. as um, that cloth. Um, the one Brilliant. on the other side, on the right side, is um, 
I think someone fighting with um, a lion. So yes. I think we've all heard the story about um, Samson. We've heard um, this Greek um, god. Um, mythology, uh, yeah. Person. Yeah, uh, mythology about, you know, um, someone slaying um, like a lion and all that. So there is this um, um, a fancy um uh, like man called um i think i see what i mean uh, like if i yeah, I've um, heard about so, him yes yeah like we've, like we've all heard about the legend you know surrounding i say bomb so i began just to read a little bit about him just to like research about you know what is it about like i say bomb because it is fascinating for me his story sounded very much like um this greek um guy is it uh, like i've forgotten it hercules Hercules, you know, Hercules. Um, yeah, uh, Hercules. He was very, very, very strong. You know, you know, he was a giant. He would yeah. capture things. Um, 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 he would leave his um, um, like fingerprints in rocks. You know, he, you know, like he would carry people. He will, you know. And I said, this, this, this guy's story is very similar to very um, similar. Like Hercules. But I think if you go to Ghana in many African places, everybody knows about Hercules. Everybody has said a story about something like in the Bible. Why yeah. don't we know about Asebo Memphi as well? So, <laughs> and, and I read about him, and it is quite fascinating that the story that I read about him that like he was, um, he came from I think Egypt mm. in the olden days, Egypt. Um, they had a shipwreck in you know Ghana, and, and I think he survived. So that's why, like, he lived there like, with his people. Wow. He was a giant, you know, there. And I think there is a cave that um, has been covered. That is where, like, he used to store, like, his stuff, which is still right. in the central region. Um, the rocks, like, that's within amazing. the central region that has got his fingerprints there, that mm -hmm. are still there. And if you see the fingerprints, they are, you know, not normal yeah, fingerprints. No <laughs> yeah. Prints, yeah. they are, you know, uh, like massive. Yeah. So, I said, do you know what? Let me just represent in my own way, you know, like I yeah. can imagine because just paint something just to show his strength. Mm. And that is how mm. I came mm. up with that painting. Painting, uh, like I say, about Memphi. So that painting represents I say, about Memphi, like, about you know, uh, yeah, because of his, like, more or less, like his strength. It was strength. just to show his, like, strength that maybe some of the things that, um, um that greek yeah, guy did, um, like hercules did and um, there yes. was someone in ghana who also did exactly the same and if we right. preserve uh, like preserve this kind of stories and this kind of places which are still there you know as mm -hmm. evidence in the central region maybe yeah. tourists it, it would become tourists like a people would know about him people will come and see and listen to those stories all things that happen like in ghana Exactly. Um, because the thing is, if we believe that Hercules existed, why yeah. can't we believe that Asebo Memphi also existed? Yeah, we I have, think even uh, yes. yeah, even with Asebo Memphi, there's more evidence that he existed. But there's more evidence. Hercules, I, I think <laughs> with like with Hercules, uh, um it's like it's a mythology, isn't it? Like it's a That's myth. Right. But it's a myth. at Sebo Memphi, there is more evidence, there is evidence that he fought against like the Dutch and you know there yes, is really. historical he existed maybe it's been a little bit like exaggerated that uh, he was a giant right. and he was you know he will carry houses but, but, and all that but yeah even having said that you know the archaeologists have been able to prove that there are giants that existed amongst us they've got skulls they've got huge yes. even that of goliath i saw something yeah. you know so yeah. it wouldn't be surprising for yeah. asebo murphy to have been in his time so yeah definitely yeah, yeah. yeah. there are there are there are yeah, there are some evidence in the, like the central region, even though that ha evidence hasn't been really mm. um, like they've not been preserved very well. But That's there right. are there are like you know um, like evidence, and it was just to highlight you know that there right. was one time again you know like a very long time ago there was a giant who lived in Ghana and did so many of the things that we you know like we hear of the um, mythical Hercules you know um, like doing as well. So. I think Definitely. it's for the next generation like to be aware of him. So we have a comment from Mo. I will do Mo says amazing artist. Hi, Mo. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for your comment. Let, let's show one more artwork. Uh, let's let's keep telling our story. So the next one is to do with these two paintings. Yeah. Um, 
I think these are some of your earlier paintings, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. So what I do most of the time is uh, um, at first every summer, I would just sit a little bit to paint something that I would call a little bit soft, um, okay. uh, a, a little bit lighter to yeah. to 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 encourage uh, like someone to like to bring some hope. So let me start with the person like on the right, the woman sitting like in that um, like armchair. Okay. So yeah. I just wanted to highlight a little bit about body positivity. Um, like mm -hmm. at the time, so it was there. There was so much bombardment in the like in the media, making yes. women and people feel that they are not adequate. You know, especially um, um, I, I, I don't know how to put it. Is it um, larger size like women? Or plus, bigger size plus like size. women? Yeah, yeah like, uh, like the plus size. You know, right. they are not like adequate. So I sat down and just said, Do you know what? It is wrong. I think um, human beings are not like we are not supposed to be. You know, look one way. We are not supposed to be slim. No. <laughs> you know, there are some <laughs> people that really look different. And there are some people That's that right. have got a, a plus size. So why not? You know, they can also have fun. They can also be fashionable. They can also Definitely. look sophisticated as well. So why not paint them looking relaxed? And and I yes. think I wanted to also bring a little bit of relaxation as well because I think we are. In a time whereby I think it's hassle, hassle, hassle. We, yes. we, 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 we put so much emphasis on people we going out there, work, working 24 hours, just hustling. Right. No time to relax, no time to enjoy, you know. So yeah. I said, Do you know what? Let me cover body positivity, you know, yeah. and also just to show that people can really chill out as well. And, and <laughs> relax know? in their own setting, yeah. yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. chill out as well. So that was that image. The second image is, is more a little bit different, but again, it's just looking at the softer side as well. That's right. That is to just capture um the like the time that we have to take to prepare like ourselves, you yes. know, um to do anything. So mm -hmm. um the art itself, you know, like when I painted it, it was like untitled. But I said, do you know what? Whatever that we do, whether mm -hmm. we are stepping out to do anything, we, we do need to prepare because. We are, whether we like it or not, anytime that we step out, anytime that we open our mouth to say anything, we are representing either ourselves, our family, our community, our race, exactly. you know. And, and I think that for me, um, um, being um, a Ghanaian in the diaspora <laughs> most yes. of the time, and in the, like my line of work, I've been in a situation where I've been the only, say, black person black or um, yeah. like the Ghanaian who has to like represent so yes. you like you feel the uh, like the weight that like you're really representing um an entire country or like country. an entire this and like race you know yes. i've left workplaces whereby that was the first time that they have worked with someone you know black or someone who really looked like me because some of the industry that i've worked in is very 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 old and That's mainly true. dominated by white you know like british male so um yeah and and I said, do you know what? Anytime that you step out, anytime that you open your mouth, even like like if you think you're not being judged, you are being judged. You are representing you are. something. And you, you have to prepare, you have to get yourself ready, you know, That's right. for for you know, like to 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 like to do to to do justice or to give a good representation of yourself, your people, your community, like your race, you yes. know, and 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 that is what like the meaning behind like that painting. This one. That's true. Yeah. The next one, I suppose, is in line with the body image as well, isn't it? That is that is that's exactly the same. Again, I was highlighting the body image and also um more or less like a like should I call it quote and unquote a shade uh are the hassle um <laughs> um uh, like culture that you know what there are times that you need to just Let lay go. everything down and just that's rest. It. Just okay. rest. <laughs> just take and i think you know, i think you've really communicated it because i can see the wine bottle you know yeah, reading slippers yeah, you know the person yeah. is really in a very comfortable uh exactly. state comfortable in their own skin relaxed yeah. in their own room yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and that and that and that painting really did um it, for me i think it was one of my significant paintings because That's right. it really it really pushed me out quite a lot like to be honest with you i had 
so many people, so many people are covering <laughs> it. I think um, when I posted it, uh, the first time that I posted it, someone just like snubbed it. And oh, um, wow. there was, you know, it was posted and reposted in so many different places. It's been captured in magazines and it's been covered Amazing. in so Amazing. many different places. And it, it, it connected with a lot of people that people. I was quite surprised. And, and that is like one of the messages that I got um, that, you know, like as an artist, like you never know how, you know, you know how much your work would connect with like people okay. i've had people who were really going through a lot mental uh, like mm. mental health like challenges who just this this art really spoke to them quite a lot like in so many different ways so most of the time <laughs> i will leave the interpretation to people just for them to do their own like interpretation and interpretation. you know i had people calling me from you know like so many different places you know <laughs> um just to have a chat about this art yeah, uh, it, wow. so like I see it wow. as one of my most like significant like pieces. Pieces, yes, yes. I think arts should either provoke you or you know set you in a thought pattern. Uh, you yeah. can either identify with it or not, but it yeah. should still get you thinking, and that's yeah. what you've been able to achieve here. Yeah, that's right. Moving on to the uh, the stories, the African stories. I've got a few paintings yeah. where you've told um, Ashanti Kingdom stories. Let's yeah. look at this one, for instance. Um, yeah. This one, I think I can identify with the one on the left and the right hand side. Uh, yeah. I will leave it to you to actually explain what's going on here. So, on the let's start with the one on the left, which is the Yasan to our war, happened in 1900. Um, 19, okay. uh, yeah, like 1900. This is um, for me, Yasan to is an inspiration. I think she, she, is. she is, you know, um, we can really learn a lot from her or this generation can really learn uh, like a lot like from her she's everything right. that um like we are fighting for uh, for yes. human race um like to be this generation like to be this is this is this is the time where um this is this is way before um i think um equality gender equality oh yes. became like a fashion way before that. Way <laughs> in before the western that. world so That's right. i think this one speaks a lot to me in so many different levels that our ancestors our grandparents you know knew quite a lot or there is quite a lot that we can actually you know like learn so yes. again i think i told a little bit about this um, um painting when i began that when i started you know i've always been fascinated by um Ghanaian, like you know like history especially um like ashanti because maybe um, I grew up in Ashanti region, um, even though yeah. I'm not an Ashanti, but I grew up there. So I'm <laughs> always like, you know, like fascinated by the like Ashanti culture. And mm. um, I was looking for the Yasantua story. We've all learned it in primary schools, secondary schools, or yes. and um, like in many different places. But um, apart from the photo whereby you would see that he was, um, I think, very, very old. I think that was when Good. like he was captured and sent to the Seychelles, Seychelles, and also yeah. there is one, which is um, one that she was like in a pose. I don't know whether it was said or because there is a little bit debate like about that one. Uh, oh, yeah. That is, I think, is the only two images um, that like okay. we know about. You know, are like yes and so. But I think, to be honest with you, if you go to the British like museum, there are grand paintings of their, you know, ancestors. I will call them their oh, ancestors. Yeah. You know. Oh, yes. um, you know showing them like in their prime what they stood for and That's that right. image alone image alone tells the story of how significant that person was how mm. brave and courageous that person was and yeah. you know i i was looking for something for yasanto because what she did at the time when the men in her kingdom you know really were all running away you know nobody True. wanted to stand up to the british because the british, many yes. of them Many of them like had been captured, you know, and sent to like mm -hmm. exile because, and and they were all scared. And I think this woman said that, do you know what? If the men are not going to fight, do you know what? I'm going to lead. Uh, you know, like I'm going to, and that and that alone inspired the men, yeah, to 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 rise up as well, like you know, uh, like with the women, and they rebel against like the British for, I think, quite a long time. Well, for a long in time, in the long run, was she was yeah. but I think yeah. that war ended up with many British people, like many British, you know, um, um, like forces. 
and allied like forces like dying as well and yes that, you know some like ashantis that are dying but that story is not really told very very well and and i think That's i good. told you about the story of um like a, a very very good account of that um um like war and i mm. think you know the book like the like the image was um like a zulu being yes. and most of the time like when you see this um like battlefields of um like africans or you know like natives and the um colonizers or yeah. the 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 like the western forces it is yeah. always like you know painted like in a certain way that africans will, would come with spears running away you know being chased and being yeah. <laughs> like slaughtered and, and, I said and, that, and the, thing, the thing that fascinates me is that because they've got guns yeah the africans with the spears do not even approach them no, it's it's no, painted no. or depicted even it's when you watch the movie it's as if yeah. we don't even come so close we are yeah. shot at a very distance and exactly. and that's the end of the story no no that wasn't, that that wasn't, wasn't the full story no, no no like if you read um even um the um the first you know like anglo like Ashanti anglo Bana, you know, yeah. um you know the Ashantis had guns you know like right. they had guns they were well organized army and the british yeah. were you know surprised and this one happened in 1824 1823 <laughs> so, yeah like way before the like yes and so on so i think you know like the images that have been painted by you know like the western world we to me it doesn't really like reflect you know it doesn't really, like credit. Um, you know like it doesn't so i think the yasanto one was to just portray the courage of the woman the bravery like of that like woman Definitely. you know what she stood for and, and i think provide a little bit of a balance of what actually may have happened rather yes. than to see you know the african with a spear running away and, <laughs> and all that you know yeah like some of us you know like really uh, like resisted so that oh, was yes. that the the next image that you can see is clearly the okonfornochi one which i think many of us know that yeah. was the formation of the ashanti kingdom uh one That's of right. the greatest you know like kingdoms um mm -hmm. uh, like in africa and i think um ever it, you know, it is still you know um a a very formidable so, empire basically exactly so like when you read about it like we all have um an image of Confanochi, what really happened and all that but again i was looking for something to really represent what happened i know that there are some one or two paintings that tries to capture that but the occasion itself you know i wanted something to capture the kings um the sure. deba a sure. little bit of the grandeur of the occasion yes. i don't yes. think it's kept and, and and to be honest with you let me <laughs> let you in like in the secret i think this painting i'm going to expand it there will be other it's, it's going to end up being um, like a trepage whereby okay. this is going to be the middle one there's going to be a right and a left one whereby right. it would capture the environment as well you know Amazing. the, the, the like the occasion people dancing and drumming and it is like it captures something about our culture that it was it was a deba you know whether we believe it or not that the god is to drop from heaven this yep. is this is the narration this is what has been passed on to us it's, right. it's, it's not being captured very well i don't yep. think the paintings are they do them justice yeah, they are justice. very very good that it's being captured in one way or the other but just to bring some modernity some you know bring it like to the now so that the now. The, like the uh, like the new generation can connect you know um, with um, the story as well so that is and I, and I, and I think you you put it really well in the sense that in our culture when we have in a deba it's yeah. not just <laughs> done in secret it's yeah. done in a very public a uh, uh, place yes. and then you've got all these drumming dancing singing yeah. everything going on so we can't leave yeah. that out and no, you've you no, hit no, your nail, no, yes. No, no, yeah. You've captured it really and, well. And, and I think one thing about that painting that really, you know, I'm quite happy with is that um the faces are the painful because I really wanted to capture, you know, in my in my head, most of the time in my paintings, I try to put myself in the middle that the if middle. I was standing there, what would I have seen? <laughs> so True. so I try to put myself True. right in the middle of um the event or of the situation and see that if you see something dropping from the heavens what will be your face how the reaction will face you know <laughs> uh, like how will i like react you know am i going to just yeah. stand there am i going to look at 
you know, my clock, or am I going to look, you know, <laughs> like into the sky? And I, I don't, I, I don't think this one has been captured in this way no. before. So no. most of the time, if I'm going to do any painting and I think I cannot add or improve to what has been captured, I wouldn't even try, you know, like I That's wouldn't great. do. So, yeah. <laughs> Look at a beautiful comment from Nana Ajari. Nana Ajari is an artist friend of mine from Ghana. And he Thank says, you. great interview. Thank you, Nana Ajari, as well, for your comment. Thank you. Keep the comments flowing. And if you have any questions for Senior Richard, please do so. Ask the question, and I'll pass the question on to him. But let's look at this picture as well, uh, this painting. There are several, several. I, I, I was so small for choice. I didn't know which one to go. <laughs> but let's look at another Ang Anglo-Saxon for war um, that yeah. you've, you've painted beautifully. Yeah. So okay. this one... This this one represents the first Anglo Ashanti war, which we all know that um, the British general at the time was McCarthy. Um, right. I, I believe it, it, it is. There is so much, um, 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 so much has been written about this one. I think it, it is for me when I was um, trying to capture this one, it was quite. I I, I found it to be very very fascinating. Um, <laughs> it's um, the British you know, um, wanted to silence like the Ashantis, you know, like at the time, yeah. because they had captured some part of Ghana and Ashanti yeah. wasn't part of, you know, they were not colonizing uh, like Ashanti. So yeah. um, they had some part of Ghana as, you know, um, a base. The and they found the Ashantis to be very, very stubborn because the Ashantis would, like, you know, like usually carry raids into, deep into the British like territory, like in Ghana. And, Definitely. um, um, more or less, you know, um, like get like some of, um, um, like, you know, like take, you know, like some of their stuff. And the British wanted to teach them like a lesson. So at the I'm time, sorry. the British general at the time was very, very, comp like the British, like in general, at the time were very, very arrogant. And they were uh, very a, a little <laughs> bit, you know, uh, like underestimated how organized the Ashantis could be because they, they thought they could just, um, yeah, move down from like move up from the coastal areas straight to uh, the sun, the, the, the sun yeah, region, yeah, mid belt, just to uh, uh, more or less like teach them like a lesson. So, I think if you read things about this one, there the British came with I think is it, is it thousand five or ten thousand, you know, um, like army, uh, um, that's right, and it was um raining uh, at a time, it was very, very, very wet. The Ashantis most of the time we're very very organized you know in <laughs> warfare. They, like they knew their terrain so That's they it. met them in i think in the present day Adansi. there is a forest right. out there so they, they they didn't ambush them i think like they met them there are like around that area and i think that that is where that battle took place and mm. they 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 really planned it very very well that that surprised the british like general yes quite a lot that um i think the british saw some that the Ashantis were hidden like in the forest they took yeah. the, like upper um like ground you know um of the battle so the british started with their gunfire their like ammunition started like firing and right. you know this kind of stuff but the Ashantis kept quiet so <laughs> the <laughs> british fight 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 when they heard that uh, the, the the gun battle you know like, the, the, yeah as fighting or you know like gone down then they realize that are we have they have they run out of like ammunition or what? <laughs> the British didn't come alone. They came with their allies, you know. Wow. Um, they came with like the Fantis and uh, yeah. I think like good the good coast at the time they had many um, right. allies as well. So when they were running out of um, uh, ammunition, the Ashantis, you know, like sprang up, no, and that right. was yeah. a tactic of the Ashantis. They used it in many other wars as well, and they won. Right. To be honest with you, this one I think. The main lesson in this painting, um, in the end, I think um, the like the gruesome part of this like story was that the general was captured, his head was chopped off, uh, wow. um, and taken to like the palace and the king at the time. It is like written that the king at the time, you know, like used it as a drinking cup. I don't, yeah. I don't think that yeah. was like accurate. I think they used it like as a trophy. A um, trophy. The, 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 it, the, it, showed, the, it showed how organized the Ashantis exactly. were in that time. Exactly. Yes. It's Dating like, back to 18, 18, what, 1823? Yeah, uh, uh, 1823, 1824, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah, and I think that the lesson from this one was that I think 
being in a western world whereby you know like you speak to a lot of people and there are there are times that i think fingers are pointed to the africans or the black people that maybe black people were too weak too oh, feeble yeah. they were um, they sat down to be colonized you know they didn't yeah. put up any fight and this is an evidence you know that uh, not you know all of us were willing they just raise your hands and say oh exactly no, 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 no. let me go yeah. you no know, like we resisted we fought That's right. and we won some of these battles oh, we were yeah. intelligent enough to be organized you know True. and won some of this True. um uh, like fight against you know people that had superior i would say you yeah. know better um ammunition you know we really defeated them like with our like intelligence as well so that that to me is um like the lesson like in that one and and again just to capture that one like in history because I, i've i've never seen any uh like representation of that um, um um like war no you've you've captured it really well and i think history would thank you for for capturing it because um yeah. as you rightly said if we don't capture it now we will lose the essence of the story from a visual yeah. perspective so yeah. it's best that we tell our own stories from our perspective as well yeah. rather than yeah. just, someone else to do it just one thing before we move on one thing that i'm beginning to realize is that when i paint this kind of stories people are very fascinated people mm. really want to know it's like did you did you know how come i've never read about this how come i've never seen this in, you know um anywhere and yes. i think I think we've lost the the sound. I, I've lost your sound, Richard. If you can hear me, I've lost your sound. Okay, so let's try and unmute. Great. Okay, so can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Can Good. you hear me? We lost the very last sentence. No, I was I was saying that most of the time when you paint this kind of um like you know like stories, um yes. it connects with a lot of people because there are many people who really want to know history or balance like history, really want exactly. to know the other side like of the stories, like as well. And exactly. the first Anglo Ashanti one has been shortlisted for um this year's Royal Academy of Arts. Mm. Uh, summer like edition so i'm really hoping that you know it would it, it would be selected um uh, to be exhibited really? and for many people to understand and know like our stories like as well we we are actually rooting behind you it needs to be selected <laughs> because we need your story to be to be told and seen um, our yeah. story through your painting so marie yeah. says that i like the reminder that our forefathers didn't just give in to colonialism uh, the yeah. ashantis were back beautifully put exactly yeah. that you know, yeah. uh, we didn't just sit there for them to just come no. and overpower us. No. Ashantis and, and you know, Ghanaians to no. a strong degree are yeah. quite strong-minded people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm currently, like, researching about um, the slave trade in Ghana. Right. How, mm -hmm. you know, were the locals ready, willing to be captured? Um, yeah. So far, I think some historical, there are, like, historical, like, evidence that, people resisted, you know, to the That's end, right. um, <laughs> you know, uh, there mm -hmm. were, there were many people that really put up like a fight, even the when fight. they were being led like into those like ships. And I think That's that um, some of my upcoming paintings would capture that because um, I, I really would want my paintings to like inspire, to educate people that I think there is other side of the story that needs to be told that needs to be you know when people are and listening blood. and like and, yeah. and, and like and reading about this gruesome things that really happen you know mm. um that you know i would say crime that happened to us they should yes. also take take heart that um our fathers our forefathers like resisted they they were not just sitting down there as targets to be just True. uh True. Captured. yeah That's some true. of them really fall back that's true. Right. Let's look at this one. Uh, I'm trying to understand this particular painting, but I couldn't. So, <laughs> Richard, can you tell us what's going on? I mean, this is a brilliant piece. Uh, yeah. Yes. But tell us what, what, what's the brain behind this one. This, this, this is one painting that it took me a very, very long time to paint because I painted it 
and um, I left it for I think about five six months. Went back to oh, it wow. because um, I know I know like you are an artist as well. So yes. most of the time, as artists, when we do paint something and we know that it's not complete, you will know that within yourself that <laughs> your story is still not know. complete. I That's like right. I like mythology, and sometimes I like to paint what is going through my head. And I don't know, <laughs> as creative people, sometimes like we are a little bit crazy. You know, <laughs> we have to be. Yeah, of... right. <laughs> the world will not be round. <laughs> a, a lot of a lot of crazy things um, do go through like our heads, and this yes. is like one of them. So this one started um, around last year when we had a lot going on when the COVID, the lockdown started. We okay. had the George Floyd um, protest, the Black Lives True. Matter protest, like starting. We had, you know, and. My line of work, you know, as um, an environmental scientist, you know, mm. there is so much warning about the destruction of the environment and all that. So True. It, for me, I think it's, it was a very, very, very chaotic time last year, um, mm -hmm. the first quarter of last year. And I think yeah. uh, like the whole of last year. So I was just thinking about the battle that goes through like my mind every single day, you know, True. like when I wake up, yeah. there is the good, there is the bad. You know, yes. so um, within the painting, you could see two worlds or an opening into two worlds. You know? right. <laughs> Most of the time, what I would say is that the audience do have to make up their own mind. This is my own interpretation. Someone would have a totally different like interpretation. Totally different. Yeah. yeah, and I'm happy with that. <laughs> you know, I think that's the beauty <laughs> of art. So I, I can see two worlds, you know, that is the world that I want that or the world that I aspire to be in. That is the yeah. more peaceful world coming this in world, which is the That's one right. on your right hand side. They peek yeah. into that. Then there is the world which we are currently living in, which is being destroyed by so many chaotic. things. Yeah, very um, chaotic. So you could see it is it's got references to um revelation, like in the Bible, about yeah. um death sitting on you know the pale horse and That's destruction right. fire. And you could see but you could see animals jumping out of that. People will really want to escape from that world. And they would want to get really. exactly. And they would want to get into a new place. You know, That's so it. if you bring it to the mind, what goes into like go on like in my mind. If you've got any vices or anything that you are not happy with, be mm. it, you know, wanting to improve yourself, wanting to do anything new. Yes. You make a decision, you get into the middle. The middle yeah. part, which is you know, um, like nowhere. So right. you make up your mind, I want to leave, you get to the middle, which is a very annex, you know, a big place whereby yeah. this is this is where the battle really like rages. You've got right. the good, you know, and the, bad. Uh, and the bad, you know, everyone like all sides are fighting to get hold yeah, fighting of for your attention. Position. Exactly. Yes. So you get things that want to draw you back into. What you are running away from, yes. and what I want the message that I wanted to put across is that even though you've got things that want to draw you back into your old self, into mm -hmm. where you want to, you know, um, say improve be. on or be better, yes. um, there are invisible forces as well. Definitely. You can call it God, you can call it yeah. guardian angels, you can call it yeah. your friends, you can call it your family. You yes. know, you can call it good people who mm -hmm. like who are there as well, you know, who who would encourage you to give you passage or to True. help you fight to get you to your new place. So don't spend too much time in the middle because yeah. if you spend too much time in the middle, you'll be crushed, you'll be, stuck back. You'll be killed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you you you'll either be stuck back or be killed. Yes. Yes, exactly. So don't spend too much time, continue to fight. Because there are other invisible forces, there are good friends, good people, who are the gatekeepers who would grant you pass to this new Definitely. place whereby you want to be. Definitely. So that is the representation. So it's every single day for me that battle goes on, like in my mind. That That's okay, right. I want to improve, I want yes. to be a better person. But you get to somewhere that is so difficult that how do I do this? And you, you know, I you I, I, I take comfort that. There are invisible forces. There are friends, good, good people like around me who would help me when I make up my mind to battle to get to this new improved place. 
very strong message. I think you've, you've really captured it because each one of us, I believe, on earth has the mm -hmm. battlefield for the mind. We exactly. all contemplate, we all deliberate, we all, yeah. there are bad habits that we want to, uh, you know, forego. There are new habits that we want to develop. We want to yes. get to a better place, whether in your yeah. marriage, whether in your relationship, your yeah. career. There are asp aspirations. Yeah. But to yeah. be able to cross over, you need to fight. <laughs> you need to do that mental, like mental, mental fight. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You've done so, it. You've done it. So let, let's talk about last year. As you rightly said, there was a lot yeah. going on. Um, the pandemic hit us. And the whole world was confused. <laughs> we didn't know what to do. Then coupled with that came the um, Black Lives Matter event when George yes. Floyd was killed. And the whole, you know, uh, the whole world, as you say, rose up, mm -hmm. most of them against the act and then some of, yeah. of them yeah. for the act. Um, a lot of us represented it in many forms. You had yeah. poets giving up, you know, speeches. We had artists yeah. doing their songs, musicians also do, doing their bits. We as yeah. artists painted different versions of, of, yes. of uh, what we wanted to say. And I know that you did a painting on that. Let me show it now. Uh, this one, right. Yeah. So the one on the left-hand side. Yes. Can you tell yeah. us, I know I know what inspired you, but why did you present it in this manner? Yeah, so uh, I think usually when things are happening like around me, I really do want to take my time and, mm -hmm. and just like understand things and look at what can really like represent um or whether i can add anything at all like to the yeah. story so um i think last day when it happened you know i think being a black man in the uk here i've experienced uh, many you know like racism like in many different ways or uh, <laughs> i would say it, I, you know i would call it out to be uh, like racism or like discrimination. It's racism. We, whatever we that yeah 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 and, and i think that for me i have try to capture that in my old um, paintings. You will see okay. some of them, you know, um, people with their hands like behind them, you know, That's right. the flag being taken away from them and all that. So I have seen it and I think we've said it, so many of us have said it in so many different ways, but I don't think the world has ever, you know, like listen. So when it happened to George Floyd or when it was captured like on camera, I think, um, in the UK, yeah, it's been captured on camera uh, like many times, but many for some times. reason, um, it's not really publicized, you know, quite well. So when it happened, I said, Do you know what? I will take my own experience. I will take what I've experienced with the police here. I yeah. you know what is happening like in America, the distraction and everything. And I, I think pay pay tribute to um, the lady who is um, um, like standing up to the, up to the police. Yes. Yeah, you know, um, like just just to put like something out there that you know it is happening like in America. Even though you could see blood draining from the American descent flag, it's not blood. only like in America, but mm -hmm. it happened quite a world in many different places, like in the world. In the UK here, I think it's it's exactly the same. Um, in True. many like European countries, it's exactly the same. In many Asian countries, it's exactly the same. For me, I've had the privilege of traveling to many different places as a result of the work that I do. So I see discrimination and racism in many different forms, you know. <laughs> uh, like I've seen it in many different forms. So it is not something that is just unique to America, you know. So yeah. even though you can see an American design flag there, it is it is just to say enough is enough. It's worldwide. We've heard it before, uh, you know, like we've seen it, we've experienced it. You know, it is about time that the world has to, you know, like understand that black lives are being, you know, black lives, you know, to some is not valued as other lives. So we True. needed to highlight it, even though, like we've mentioned it like many times. Great. Fantastic. So that is, that is that is what this um, image like tries to capture. Amazing. And the image on the right as well, please. Yeah, the image on the right is, again, it was, um trying to tell the wind rush you know story which is again another um unfortunate i would say one of the most um um great, uh, I, I, I think I'm, I'm i'm trying to find a better expression not to be too emos uh, like emotional <laughs> passionate like about this um great injustices to happen mm. to um mm. blacks in the uk i think yeah. people think that it's happened just to caribbeans but 
it happened to Caribbeans and in Africans, you know, um, to Africans who came to um, the UK here yeah, when yeah. Um, the UK um, um, at the time they were they were they were British like citizen, you know, oh, before yeah, yeah. Um, their like immigration act. Um, any right. any anybody born like in a common world was a UK citizen, you know. So uh, um, after the Second World War, these people were invited to come and. Um, um, like you know, uh, um, 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 like how, you know? yeah, like what, like we called the motherland, you know, like at the yeah. time, which was yeah. um, like Great Britain to contribute, but you know, they came in this empire that uh, like went rush, and and I think this people came, contributed quite a lot, helped build the United Kingdom. Then mm -hmm. I think for some reason, I think at some point, um, people realized that. Sorry, like we've seen enough brown black faces. We don't want That's to right. see, you know, uh, a lot. So um, it's like resulted in the like immigration act, and and I think I was just I wanted something triumphant, something like victorious, to represent the spirit of those who came, you know, at the mm. time. You know, we all know there was um, not not an inquiry, but um, a recent like apology uh, yes. by yes. Uh, you know yeah. um, the British like government the way yes. that some of these people that really have built the nhs were denied access to the nhs you know they were denied access to even work in the united kingdom you That's know and true. you know some of them were deported to countries that they've got absolutely no knowledge some of them were deported to the caribbean countries. some of them even were deported to ghana you know and they came here in the 60s um <laughs> you know and it, it's like they had no ties at all you know, mm, to mm, Ghana mm, or to mm. the Caribbean countries, whereby they were deported to, but they were deported. Some people died as a result of being denied healthcare. Okay, Some people so were homeless as a result, they lost, as a result of losing their job because their mm. immigration like status was taken away from them. These from people them. came here as British like citizens and yes. their Britishness or like their, their, their citizenship were taken away from them. That is the mm. fact like of the mm. matter, you know, and if you dig deep, it is color or race has got more to do with it. You know, for it's me, a, I would, you know, I, yeah. I call things as like they are. As they are. So it, it was a huge and, mistake on the part of yeah, the British it was, government. Like, like and, it was uh, a massive mistake. And I think that mistake yeah. is still ongoing, to be honest with you. I don't think I like, mean, it, it's good they've apologized, <laughs> but they, they should put uh, systems in place so that it doesn't even happen again. Exactly, exactly. That's but right. this, the painting is just to represent the spirit of these people who were there were so many hurdles put in their ways to stop them from progressing but you see this young woman with her hands like raised that Let she is that going again. into the future she's yes in spite of every header that has been put in a way she's yeah. emerged victorious she's right. successful she's confident she's yeah. stepping into the future with for security the dogs like okay. represent security, security. Now, do you know what i've got security here if you come close to me i will bite i'm not <laughs> going to be quiet i will bite and right. um you, you see the queen's guard you know um the queen's yeah. guard um at a time yeah. that is um like a representation just to show that you know this 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 person even though when they came in they were not really welcome they were not really accepted very well but do you know what? She's earned the respect of many people, you know, That's with it. their, you know, what they've been like able to like achieve. So achieve. even mm. though that like like the system hasn't like honored them, they still, you know, the respect, the input, the respect. You know, she is the queen of the street. She is ruling the street. <laughs> so like, if you look behind, like within the background, you could see in black and white when they arrived. And That's right. now this confident, colored, fully colored in an just African print, yes. just going out into the future, very, very, very bold, um, courageous. <laughs> exactly. Not afraid of exactly. anything. That's it. And I think that's where we belong. I can see that you're very passionate about social justice and um, when it comes to human rights issues and all that. Yeah. And you, you, you depict that in your artwork. Is that the case? that 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 is absolutely uh, you know absolutely like the case um um unapologetically um <laughs> you know uh, um like socialist you know um, that's it like i you never have to right in, in 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 ghana growing up in ghana i didn't even 
know about the differences in the political um, like oh, yeah. things, whether what you know, like it means to fight for like social justice and all that. But right. I think the first time that I came here, listened to one or two people, and I said, Do you know what? This is what I've been trying to define. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, anything that I, I, I respect every race. Mm -hmm. I respect everyone, and I also believe that no one is beneath the other. We are all equal, exactly. and we are all, you know, powerful. Um, except that, you know, if you know your value, if you know your worth, you don't allow anybody to put you down or right. dictate to you. And that is the attitude that, you know, I carry it like with me in my line of work. Sometimes you meet people that you have to. You know, it's like, it's like, you have to. why are you telling me to do this? I'm telling you because, you know. <laughs> 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 because it's it's like uh, like so many people needs to be you know uh, like educated and educated we do and that like every single day and you uh -huh. know and i'm one of that type that i believe so much in my race i believe so much in people you know like irrespective yeah. like of, the, yes. of it's all like about humanity have. isn't it yeah exactly humanity exactly. we believe in humanity so one exactly. race is not about the other we are the human no, race no no, one no, race. no 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 that's right equal human like race. respect that's equal it. mutual like respect you know yes. we have to respect our 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 history we have to respect our uniqueness we have to restrict you know like uh, like respect uh, like our strength you know exactly. and um we all would you know like all of us you know we complement like each we'll other well. very happily yeah exactly exactly yeah. Uh, the yeah. world yeah. will not be perfect you know without any other race you any know other. not being present you know Blacks do contribute, whites do contribute, Asians do contribute. Yes. So we all play, uh, you know, like a role. No one is... And that's what, you know, and that's what God in his infinite wisdom has, has put yeah. us on earth to do. You know, he exactly. wants the differences to be there so that we can exactly. each contribute exactly. from a different perspective and a different exactly. culture. Let me, let's go back into this uh, pandemic time and what you did. Yeah. I know you did a lot of paintings in your downtime as... as yeah. Scientist, I'm an engineer as well. I know we are always on the roll. Every single day, oh, we've got something always, doing. Yeah. So to yeah. have that free time, especially working from home and all that, uh, yeah. it gave us a lot of freedom. <laughs> I did yeah. a lot of sketches during that time as well. <laughs> um, let me show some of the work that you did, and then you can talk us through. Was this yeah. done during the pandemic or after the pandemic? This is this this was during the pandemic. So um, right. in the pandemic, usually, as I said, I sometimes would want to reflect and tell the stories that, you know, things that I am going through and things that I think a lot of people are going through, especially if I say my community, um, I mean yes. black people. That's so right. usually like we are not seen, you know, um, like if you're living in the Western world, like you understand what I'm saying, that most yeah. of the time the, the story is not like about us, you know, we are the invisible people. <laughs> 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 uh, um, I painted this one during the lockdown whereby uh, many of us live in flats, you yes. know, very, very small spaces. In England, yeah, I think most That's of right. our houses are very, very small. Much smaller. Space is, you know, uh, space is very, very, um, uh, it, 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 it is not easy, especially those, like those of us living like in London here. It is True. difficult to get so much like space. So um, I think we were, when the lockdowns were happening, a lot of people were in a situation whereby they were spending a lot of time with their mm. families in very, very, very small tight you know, spaces. Uh, places, yeah. Yeah. Tight yes. spaces. If you've got kids like myself, you know, um, kids wants to be kids. You know, they want mm -hmm. to play indoors. They want to skate indoors. They want to play football indoors. And meanwhile, exactly. we are supposed to be indoors, especially like the first like quarantine whereby we were not even allowed to go out, you know, for a day. Oh, yes. I think we were like, uh, we could only go out once, like in a day. That's so right. we would spend time and kids wanted to. So I realized I kept telling my kids, do you know what? You cannot skateboard indoors. <laughs> you cannot ride your scooter here. You cannot do this. Uh, and I That's realized right. that, do you know what? Kids have to be kids, you know? Yeah. So this one yeah. was, again, a softer thing. Just to say True. that it's, it's more or less like taking it, my kids would skate. So it's like no skateboarding in, like, in the house. But yeah. kids they, they, they kids. the room. Do you know what? Um, <laughs> There is no skating board here, like in the house, but I will still do it. And that True. was, you know, <laughs> kid, kid, that was that. so exactly, it, 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 exactly. So that was more or less capturing to me 
what was mm. very, very typical for many families that um, kids wanted to be kids, wanted to play like indoors. And even though there were many parents who, who were telling their kids, do you know what, don't do this, don't do that. But kids exactly would right. always be kids and skate and do all these campaigns. And indoors. do what they want. And then I've got exactly. this one. Um, also, was it also done during the pandemic, is it? It was, it was, it was also done during lockdown, the pandemic. Lockdown, as you say, so, lockdown, yes. Y- y- yeah, lockdown, lockdown, sorry. It's because, like, the pandemic is still ongoing. We're, we're still in pandemic, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, again, some of us, like, who are parents, um, the left one side is um, someone, um, a girl, uh, like, a little girl talking to the mom. Um, right. The mom is supposed to be working from home, but this girl wants her attention. <laughs> You know, okay. she comes in the morning with all, you know, like with their list, you know, mommy, can I do this? Mommy, can I That's do it. that? Mommy. That's and the moms are, you know, very, 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 very tight. Sometimes, you know, the dads, we can get get a, a, like away with things a little bit. I'm not saying that we like we do that like all the time, but we can, you know. So, we're, we're, you not know uh, we're not the first point of call, are we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. So um, I really wanted to capture that, you know, um, just to pay tribute to um, um like some Moms. of the things that like the mom do go to like the yeah. like the constant like moon the constant attention That's seeking right. by the kids that you know they they are spending more and more time with you know so just to capture like one of those like moments that is just coming back again you know <laughs> just to have a <laughs> chat like with mommy so That's that was it and the one on the right hand side is one of the things that I think um wanted to highlight two things here. I wanted to highlight a little bit about mental health um during the pandemic and also okay. um highlight some of the things that we've taken for granted. You know, that the lockdown really meant that a lot of us spent quite a lot of time alone mm. in our rooms, in our homes, not going yeah. like anywhere. There are times that we yearn for just a space to be quiet, just a space, just to have a thinking, you know, um, like a place whereby you can go and just meditate, whereby you can, like you want to get away from everything and just be alone. So this is one of those moments whereby you want to move yourself away from, you know, everyone Everyone. and just, you know, be it like in the bathroom, lock yourself, Throw the bath and just lie in there just to think, That's it. you know. And 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 it also shows or demonstrates that, you know, we we like we should be thankful when we mm. are got the opportunity to experience the outside nature, you know, yeah. because when it's taken away from us, it's it, it, it can have a toll like on our mental health what as well. So it's it, it's it, it's it's got like two like messages, and I think this is one of the I, I think. Uh, I would say one of my significant like paintings. I, I I was never convinced about it because it was quite personal, you know. Yeah. You know, like yeah. story for me to tell, and I think a, a difficult like story as well, uh, like to tell. It is. You know that it is. Um, usually like you do speak with quite a lot of people just to find out, you know, how they are doing and all that. Yes. And I realized yes. that a lot of people were going through so many during mm. the lockdown. Mm whereby mm. they couldn't like express it. So I wanted to tell, um, to you know, like, a, yeah, like tell a story that would represent what people are going through as well. And I think we shouldn't take mental health for granted at all, especially during the lockdown where we were confined we in places, we couldn't meet yeah. other people and all that. You yeah. you, you really yeah. represented that very well. And I think it was shown yeah. in the JD Mallet Gallery, uh, Isolation Master Exhibition, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was the Yasanto one that was shown. It was the Yasanto one, one. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but this, this, one, this has uh, been yeah. highlighted by other media as well. M- many, 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 many. <laughs> this one has been, um, 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 it's been, is it, it is in private collection like in America, wow. um, wow. and it's been highlighted as one of the, um, in a ma- uh, magazine as one of the most profound painting, yes. you know, um, during the pandemic, and it's. I'm 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 fighting to get it like into for it to be shown like in a gallery like in America. Hopefully, the the collector would agree. <laughs> so... <laughs> hey, the story has to be told, and, and I think the yeah, painting represents yeah, yeah. it represents yeah. real life stories. That's the beauty about yeah. your painting. You know, yeah, it, it yeah, I yeah. people connect with it because um, you are exactly. able to just relate. 
yeah, through your painting, yeah, which is great. Yeah, which is great. and this and Let's this and this painting has yeah. been highlighted by a lot of people. A lot amazing, of people. amazing. Um, I realized that of late, you know, African art has been on the rise. Uh, it's everywhere. People are collectors are interested in it. Galleries are paying yeah. much more attention to the African continent. Why, why do you think that is so? I think galleries are waking up to the idea that African, you know, art can sell. I think that is one yeah. of the factors. I think it's many factors. So um, it wouldn't be just one factor. So one of the no, factors really. is that I think like they've realized that, you know what, um, there, there is money that can be made from African art. That is the first one. Right. The second one, I think, is to do with what has been happening, um, the Black Lives Matter movement. What happened yes. last year with the George Floyd one has highlighted, um, puts more or less the light or the spotlight on Africans or black people. Yeah. People black want people to know a little true. bit more about us. So, yes. and, and I think that um, art presents a very, very good opportunity for people to know about any community or any race. So I yes. think that 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 has really drawn um, like a lot of collectors and museums, galleries to look at African uh, like artists. So mm -hmm. those are the, and, and mm -hmm. I think thirdly is being the use of social media. I think African artists it's are becoming true. a little bit um, like IT savvy as well. We are putting right. ourselves out there and I think we are becoming a little bit more confident um, putting out, uh, you know, like our work out there for people to see because um in the past people really thought that if you really want to be seen by anybody then you have to paint like you know what um the images that the are out there like the western one but Style, now people yes. are, are realizing that do you know what if i paint something that represents my story yeah someone can connect you know to that and someone can actually buy it or someone okay. can actually it can tell someone like a story and I think that there is a thread here that human beings, if you dig deeper, if you scratch below the skin color, we are We're all the same. Most of the time the same. Like we're all fighting for exactly the same. Definitely. Be it white, Definitely. black, you know, yellow, yeah, green, yellow, blue, blue we're whatever. We're all fighting for ex exactly the same. We're all fighting to be recognized. We're all exactly. fighting for respect. We're all fighting for equality. So if you dig a little bit, you know, scratch, you know, um, um beneath the surface, I think it can and many people are realizing that. Now, I think like those are some of the factors which is contributing oh, yes. to oh, yes. African and art think, being given a little bit well, of, yeah. and I think this prominence is way overdue as well. Oh yes, way overdue, and in and in saying it's way overdue, I would like to add more to what you just said. I think one of the factors whereby in the past our art was seen as inferior, very basic, yeah. and all that. Uh, now they've realized that there's a lot more sophistication. There's a lot more. Yeah. Um, message in what we portray in our paintings. There's that spiritual aspect to our artworks as well. So yes. it's not just a stick man or a very basic shape that we present as yes. they made it seem in those days. So they are now yeah. learning more about how our art is. Um, yes. And that has given us that light on us as well. You know? It has. It has. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's a very good opportunity for us Black artists or African artists to make sure that this interest is sustained so that exactly. we can keep hold of our narrative exactly. yes and you know keep our authenticity that mm. is you know mm. for me very significant i that think, we I are think you've, answered my, you've answered my next question and it was to do with exactly what you're saying how can we yeah. um i wouldn't say take advantage but how can we capitalize yeah. on the attention the light that has been mm -hmm. shown on us how can we make sure that we make very good use of the world's attention on our art form. Yeah, I think for me, the key thing is maintaining our authenticity as you know, um, I'm like artist, mm. because again, we call it African art or call it black art, but it's yes. not homogeneous. It's not True. just one. It is different. You know, yeah. it is like a million different arts. You know, different and I think it's yeah. better we yeah, it is it is it is better we keep it that way. <laughs> that is that is that is one thing that I would say it yeah, is just to keep it simple. We keep it that way. Yes. It is it is better we keep the authenticity, it is better we maintain the stories, what really drew people mm. to have a look at you know our art. You know, it is better we keep that and keep our authenticity 
there are so many untold like stories there are so many yes. of our narratives that yes. we can tell it shouldn't be one way you know that's, that's what right. like i would say okay. um, exactly because if we follow any trend any fashion any mm. fat or whatever like you may call it with every fashion with every trend it will come to an end it will come to an end so we have to be you know conscious you know that we are keeping our authenticity that yes. we are authentic we are telling our story from different perspective you That's know right. from different the, like the million different styles that we you know like we have yes. let us keep them let us maintain them you know That's right. yeah <laughs> let us maintain them and keep going in that way we will keep the the like like the focus like on us or we, we will sustain the momentum mm -hmm. that like we're building or we, we will still sustain the interest of yep. you know people that are looking at us now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly that because um in the same manner that we have so many different languages in africa i think we yep. have different stories we have different perspectives so if all yep. of us paint a certain style a certain way yeah then i think we are following just the trend isn't it what's trending at the moment exactly. And as you rightly exactly. said, trends always come to yeah. an end. Yeah. So yeah. I think the advice that you're giving or we are giving is that African artists should be authentic. They should tell their yeah. story from their own perspective. Because let alone yeah. if you let a collector or a gallery owner dictate what they want from yeah. a commercial sense of view, then I, I, I kept telling you when we had our earlier conversation that, let's yeah. say 100 years yeah. down the line, they yeah. would see yeah. just one style of painting, but that's not what we stand for exactly. now. No, you know, no, we, we, no. we are not all the same. So we should yeah. <laughs> bring in our variety and, and our stories from our different perspective, regardless of what is being dictated at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that, that I would I, I would just want to add this message that, mm. you know, to, to, to all, you know, um, you know, like established, like artists, emerging artists, yes. uh, you know, like up and coming, yeah, uh, like artists, collectors, museums, galleries. Yes. Um, I think the message for galleries, museums, collectors is that they shouldn't see African art as, you know, just one thing or one That's painting true. or true. one style, you know, yeah. like they shouldn't. We've got abstract like artists, we've got landscape artists, we've got right. different style, realistic, yeah. you know, we've got bigger painters. So they shouldn't different. put all of us in one box, you know, box. Um, um, and those our black african artists too shouldn't follow trend you know if you True. see a certain star doing well i would say mm -hmm. wait your turn don't rush into adopting that any star. star what i would say is that learn True. St study you know pick good things learn i would mm -hmm. say always learn because mm -hmm. i am not like a trained like artist i've never been to into like any like artist so I learn, you know, whenever I see any painting, I'm fascinated. I really yes. want to know, you know, it that matters. is not the same as, you know, okay, this paint, uh, this guy is painting people blue. So I'm also going to stop I'm also going to be painting blue. people blue. <laughs> no, no, no. Like I don't do that. I'm, I'm really no. fascinated about techniques, textures, colors, exactly. Exactly. lines, movements, you know, so exactly. anybody who is doing that, I'm fascinated. I want to learn, but yes. it's not, to say that I'm going to just start painting blue people and just do exactly what they're doing. <laughs> I, yeah, like I've never seen um like any blue person before, so maybe I won't, <laughs> I won't start painting blue people. So. <laughs> and um, exactly. I think, for me, now, I think it's a really good advice. Uh, please carry on. Yeah, yeah. For me, I think what I, I I say is that I want to make my art tell like a story. Want to make the message also very 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 easy for people yeah. to pick up. That is why. I paint a little bit sometimes close to um like real so so that the message is not missed so 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 that it is easier for people just to pick I'm more interested in the education part and enlightening and uplifting like our people yes. because I can see a lot of things have been done you know to really hammer us down hammer so, us down like, like yeah. We, yeah, yeah like we need yeah. to uh, like rise up so that is why for me you know, like if you see me painting close to um, rare people, that is the like the motive, like behind that. Behind. I want the message, even if a kid 
picks my painting, I want them to get something. I want them to learn something from it. Great. You know, Fantastic. not to make it too complicated. But exactly. like, like sometimes, you know, like there are like deeper things like in my art, which like <laughs> the symbols would be, you know, picked by different people. So, so you know, like different uh, like people. That's true. That's true. Let's talk about the future. Um, what's in store for Richard? I know, I know you're just doing some marvelous work at the moment. I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to yeah. show this, but I'm gonna show it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know that you, you are doing some brilliant, huge paintings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you tell yeah. us what, what you saw? I, I think it's um I would say um that there are there are there are many things coming. Um good. Um I I I I believe in I believe in putting in the hard work, going through the process. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't look at the like the results like most of the time. Mm. I believe in putting the hard work, do your best, tell your stories. You know, the cream will always rise to the top. Um, exactly. And and I think I've got a lot of confidence, in, you know, like in myself that. If I follow the process, if I put in the hard work, you know, opportunities, things will come. The will stories come. would be told, the stories like would be known. So exactly. I've got quite a lot of interest in a lot of the things that, you know, like I'm doing. And I think recently I was telling someone that the difficult thing for me recently is keeping hold of some of the arts <laughs> that I'm creating because yeah. once I yeah. post them, yeah. you know, I people say, Yeah, I want to buy people want to snatch it. You know, it, it is it is it is it is it is the difficult part for me. Yeah. That I'm learning to keep hold of some of them so that you don't um more or less um lose the essence um, basically stop like the process or or, mm -hmm. or um tell like an incomplete um like story. Right. Yes. The pieces that I'm doing is they all follow one pattern or they all are trying to portray like one story. It's just True. highlighting significant, you know, um, say historical events or events yep. that should be like in history and learning from that. Most of the time, uh, like most of the time, uh, most of them will highlight um, the strength and the resistance mm. that our forefathers you know um went through all that like you know that they like sh you know that they showed struggle, that some they of them is. would yeah, yeah some of them would highlight some of the things some of the lessons that we need to learn from history yes. to bring it to now and to take it, right. it into the future into our future so there are a lot of different things um i'm 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 speaking you know i'm like some of the people that I'm speaking with is um, confidential, so I may True. not be able to share some of them now. But I think, <laughs> uh, like, watch out. Yeah, I would say, okay. like, watch out. We would be putting like our stories like out there, and we want it to go into like many different places as well. Amazing. I mean, it's been so much of a pleasure talking to you today. But if people want to see more of your work, uh, what are your social media handles, please, and your website yeah, and all uh, that? Yeah, yeah. Um, on Instagram is official Richard Manson. So um, official Richard, Richard Manson, or yeah, official oh, okay. Richard Manson. So like those of Instagram, you who I want think... to follow, yes, on, on on Instagram, that is the address right there, the handle right there. Please make a note of it and and follow him. Yeah, I he think shows some fantastic behind the scenes as well, isn't it? Yeah, you, yeah, you give us a bit yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah, Instagram. That I think if you want to see most of my up-to-date um paintings the ones on show that is yeah. where you see it. i've got a website as well um right. richman's 2001 at.com yes so, um, that's the website again, as well um, yeah like it shows some of my works um, um like on there as well then i think on facebook it's richman's 2001 at um oh right Oh, yeah. okay. But yeah, if they type in well. Richard so, Mensa, they can get you, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so it's Richard Mensa, personal one. Then I've got Richard right. uh, Rich Mensa 2000. Like, the two are linked anyway. So Are linked. It, it, yes. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. But no, it's been so much a pleasure of a pleasure. But what are your last words for up-and-coming African artists, to be specific? What What will you tell them? I, um, I think the last words, I think I've already hinted. I believe in, you know, um, 
just um, going through the process. You know, one or two people may be very, very lucky. They may be discovered very, very early on, and yes. they may not go through um, the the like the phases whereby you would think that nobody is looking at you. True. I would say persist. You know, it's a process. It's not like it's not a sprint. <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, like if you want your work to be available in 20, 50, 100 years, it's a process. Don't rush to put yes. out, you know, things. Think about what you like, you want your art to be known for, um, yes. you know, and, and dedicate like yourself to it. Put in the hours. It's very, very important. Put in the hard work because nothing comes, you know, like easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, nothing, nothing comes, comes easy. like easy. So put, put in, you know, like if you see some of the, um, Ghanaian artists doing very, very, very well. Um, listen to their stories. It's not um, a day. It is not True. months. It is not even one or two years. It is years of practicing. It is That's years it. of dedication. So up and coming artists, put in their shit, you know, and your work, you know, like your work, the, the, the cream will always like, like rise to the top. You will be found. You will be noticed. Your story will be known. That is, that is what like, I can say. Definitely. And we have a message for Amagati yeah. from Amagati who says, embrace the process. Great message. Embrace Thanks, Amma. Thanks yeah. Amma. That's amazing. That is amazing. Thank you so much, Richard, for your time today. We Thank really, you. I know this wouldn't be the last interview because there's much more to come in the future. And we will definitely more call on you to share your thoughts and your paintings. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Senior. And thank you to um, everyone who um, spent time to um, like listen to me as well. Thank you, really, really appreciate it. Grateful, thank you. Grateful God for the support you. as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Right, viewers, that was Richard Mensah, and I have really, really soaked in everything that he was telling me from his perspective, from the African perspective. Thank you so much to everyone that joined us today. It's been amazing. So Chantel says, thank you, thank you. I like the way she spelled the you. <laughs> That's how we pronounce it here, isn't it? Thank you so much, Chantel, for being a part of this show as well. It's been a pleasure coming your way. And if you haven't subscribed, Amma says, good interview. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Amma. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, this is where all the you know interviews that I've done so far are, are stored on. So I'll put the link over there for you to do well to subscribe. YouTube channel is uh, YouTube user EMAB75. African Art with Eric is what you would see when you get on there. And I've got countless interviews. Every single interview I do on every Saturday, I will put it there. So make a note of it, EMAB75. Do well to subscribe to my channel as well as hit on the notification button so that each time I upload a new video, you'll be well notified. This is where we are now. This is what I would bring you today. And next week, I'm going to bring another great artist in our midst where we will talk everything about African art. So thank you so much. Have a blessed week. And let's see you later next week. God bless you so much. God bless you.